more abundantly because that's what Jesus Christ came to do. John 10 verse 10, Jesus said, but I have come to give them life and life more abundantly. But it is up to you to choose whether you want to have that life. It is up to you whether you want to reject God or whether you want to accept God. But I'll tell you what will happen after you choose one or another. When you choose to accept God, there is freedom from your sin. There is liberty. Because the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. If you are looking for true liberty, it's found in Jesus Christ. Although America does have freedom, they don't tell you about the bondage of sin. They don't tell you about how sin is destroying everyone. But the Word of God, the Bible, God tells you the true freedom. He tells you about how sin will enslave you, but He is the way to be set free. So if you are looking for freedom, it's found in Jesus Christ. If you're looking for peace, that peace is not found in sin. That peace is not found in drinking or smoking. That peace is found in Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is that Prince of Peace. And he said in Matthew 11 verse 28, Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus Christ offers you rest today. He is offering you that life today. He is offering you that peace today. That love that you are looking for in either your partner, in your family. Probably you might even try to find love by watching the wrong stuff. But some of those things are only lost if you are looking for true love. True love is found in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Amen. God is love. God is love. Not what the world tells you, not what the world says. Love is love. But God is love. That's the true love. You see, the world, they, it offers you lust. And the Bible says, he who loves the world... And the lust therein has not the love of the Father, has not the love of God. Because the only thing that's in the world is lust, it's only sin. And it tells you to watch this thing, to go to that person, to lie with that person before marriage. It tells you love is love, do whatever you want. Is that really love? Telling somebody that what they are doing is okay when they're living in sin? When somebody is stealing, you say, you say, do whatever you want. When somebody is living in sin, you say, do whatever you want. Is that really right? Aren't you lying to them, comforting them in their sin? But good thing, the good thing is that God does not comfort you in your sin. God convicts you. God tells you that sin leads to death. Because God hates sin. That's right. Amen. God hates your sin. But God also has, he has offered you a way out. And that way out is through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way out. If you are looking for a solution, it is found in Jesus Christ. Because he paid your debt. He paid the reward of sin, which was death. Nobody else did that. Your mom can't do that. Your father can't do that. Your brothers and sisters can't do that. But Jesus Christ did that. That is why he is the perfect Lamb of God. That is why he is so different from any other gods. He is so different from any other prophets. Because any other prophets have sinned. Moses has sinned. Elijah has sinned. The false prophets have sinned by giving false prophecy. But Jesus Christ was that one person who never gave a false sin because truth was in him. That is why you can say that he was the truth. And notice how he says that he 
is the truth. He doesn't say I'm our truth. He's the truth. He's the truth. So if you are looking for truth, it is found in Jesus Christ. So my friends, the message to you today is about Jesus Christ. It is about Jesus and none of and none other. So my friends, God tells you to repent from your sin, to have a change of mind about sin and to renounce your sin. Jesus said in Luke 13 verse 3, Unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. But God is willing that none should perish, but that all will come to repentance. God wants you to come to repentance. That is why he gives you his word. That is why God gives you his word. For example, Proverbs 7. It says, my son, keep my, command keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. You see, because God's word is to hold you in the truth, is to keep you on the way of life. So when you keep God's commandment, it is leading to the ways of life. And Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Anybody who is claiming to love Jesus, do you really keep his commandments? If you believe in God, do you keep God's commandment? Or are you still living in sin? Are you lusting after another person? Are you keeping God's commandment or are you rejecting God's commandment? Because you can't be part of this world and part of God. Hey brother, can you That's hold this to me quick? Like, Just I like five minutes. That I can be part five. of God. Mm -hmm. I can watch all the inappropriate videos I wanted to. I can lie how much, however much I want. I can steal if I wanted to and then later on God will forgive me. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. The Bible says... Should we use the grace of God to sin? And it says, God forbid. Grace was to set you free. It wasn't so that you can have a ticket to sin. That's how I felt like. And Jesus said to those type of people, because you are neither hot nor cold, but you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. The Bible says in James 4 verse 4, Whosoever desires to be a friend of this world is an enemy towards God. When you want to be a friend of this world, when you want to continue to live in sin, when you want to continue to lust, you are an enemy towards God. And no enemy towards God will live. That's the sad news. And many people here today they choose to side with the world, but they don't choose God. They will rather choose death rather than life. Many people choose death rather than life. You choose to live in your loss that leads to death. You choose to go in the way of destruction. But God is offering you life. God is offering you love. God is offering you peace. If you would come to Him. Nothing else keeps you alive but God. The Bible says, or you know what? Let's speak some science now. I've been talking about the Bible. Let, let's speak some science now. Scientist says that the four things that you need to be able to live it's food, light, water, and air. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, that's light. Jesus Christ is the bread of life, that's food. Jesus Christ is the bread of life, that's light, or that's air. And Jesus Christ is the living waters, that's water. The four things that you need to be able to live is found in Jesus Christ. So my question to you today is, if all the things that you need to be able to live is found in God, is found in Jesus Christ, why are you running away from life? Why are you running to sin? Instead of running to the fridge, 
instead of running to your phone, run to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Savior. He is the one who can save you from your sins. Even though you can be a great sinner, Jesus Christ is a great Savior. Jesus Christ is a great Savior, and He came to save you today. God wants to save you today from your sin. But you must turn away from your sin. And I like how Proverbs 1 states it, when a hardened heart rejects God. It says, how long, you simple one, will you love simplicity? How long, you fools, will you reject the knowledge of God? Many people are rejecting the word of God. Many people are not choosing to believe in God. Instead, they say in their hearts that there is no God. That's how foolish this world has become. So the it says that a fool has said in his heart that there is no God. It's like saying zero plus one, zero plus zero, plus zero which is absurd. It's like me saying that the building that's all around you came from nothing. And that's what evolution teaches. Oh, that's what natural evolution teaches. That's what atheism teaches. They say everything came from nothing. Everything came from nothing. Which is crazy. It's like me saying that that bill came from nothing. That painting came from nothing. All the traffic lights that you see came from nothing. The clothes that you are wearing came from nothing. It's like me saying that. But you know that there was someone who designed the clothes. You know that there was someone who built the building. You know there was someone who put up that sign. And it goes the same with creation. You know that there must have been a creator in order for creation to exist. But our hearts have hardened, we have hardened our hearts for God because we want to continue to live in sin. We want to continue to fall. We want to continue to steal. We want to continue to take not freely in pain. We want to live for all. God bless you. Do you guys know Jesus? Amen. If you are living in pride today, God tells you you must turn away from pride before you are on your way. Do you guys walk with Jesus? And that's the loving God who warns you. Do you guys love Jesus? No, I'm sorry to hear that. Jesus died for you. So you choose to reject. You choose to reject God. Do you guys love Jesus? Do you guys love Jesus? Yes? Amen. Do you guys love Jesus? America has been blessed by God so much, and yet you choose to reject God, America. You choose to reject God, San Francisco, because of your sin. And sin will not lead to life, so turn to Jesus.
Jesus Christ today. Turn to Him today so that you can have life. Don't reject God. If you are looking for life today, in life, Jesus Christ is my friend. It is not found in any other book. It is not found in any other book. It doesn't matter how healthy you are. You will die. It doesn't matter how much you exercise. You will die. Do you love Jesus? God, 
they're all the same. Like Oprah said, I see, I see God up on a mountain and, and just all the different pathways going to God. But Jesus said, wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And narrow is the road and small is the gate that leads to life. Jesus said, the first Adam was a living soul, but the second Adam, Jesus Christ, was a life-giving spirit. Jesus said, if you believe in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow out from within you. See, we need to have our lives restored you guys walk with Jesus? to our God and our Creator. Our greatest need is forgiveness of sins. Our greatest need is forgiveness of sins and justification with our God through faith in Jesus Christ. It's not works. It's not trying to become religious. You can't follow your own philosophy. You can't make up your own way to be made right with God. Um, because God has ordained Jesus' blood. It's the blood of Jesus that will give you His righteousness. We need God's righteousness over our lives. The scripture says, the Apostle Paul in, in Romans chapter 1 said, For the power, of, the power of God for salvation is the gospel. The gospel is the power of God for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. From first to last, it's faith in Jesus Christ. Now a righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known. So this righteousness is given through Jesus Christ. We have to come to Jesus, and then He will give us His righteousness. <clears throat> the Lord God has declared, God has declared that He has set a day. The Lord God has set a day. The Bible calls it that day. The Bible calls it the end of the age. Do you guys walk with Jesus? The disciples came to Jesus, and they asked Him, What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And he said, watch out, for many Christs will come in my name and deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but do not be alarmed. These things must happen. All these things are happening today in the earth. And the truth is, is that, that God has history in his control. And Jesus spoke about the shakings that would go on in this world. He said that the love of most will grow cold. He spoke about the times before he comes back, and he said that there would be signs. He said that things would get so terrible on this earth. God's got a plan. Give him praise and give him glory. He's going to bring peace to many people. Give him praise and give him glory. Give him praise and give him glory. He's going to bring peace to many people. That peace will not come apart from Jesus Christ. God, give him praise and give him glory. Jesus Christ is born again. God is the king of the earth. God's got a plan. How are you doing, brothers and sisters? Jesus said. It is not to be able to stand before you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever the time zone finds you in. How are you? We are here on O'Farrell and Powell Street in downtown San Francisco with a group of uh, brothers and sisters here with Christ Forgiveness Ministries sharing the gospel and declaring the good news. Yes. Finally, once for all, it's uh, back to the time that it, it usually is at, obviously a little bit earlier here, but. Uh, what an honor it is. I'm so incredibly humbled. Just another week uh, of God's grace and of his mercy, allowing us to be a part of what he is doing, how he is working. Yeah, the, uh, I'm still trying to adjust to the weather and uh, and then, uh, yes, it's uh, right here. At, even the uh, the church is um, down in the uh, on uh, Sutter and Powell next to uh, the 7-Eleven. So yes, it's a uh, bird right here. There's also an uh, Los Angeles location, Portland. Seattle, Houston, uh, down in Florida, there are three separate locations, and uh, Jacksonville, Orlando, uh, Boston, New York. And uh, smaller locations that are 
not yet necessarily uh, officially planted, but are in the works. Uh, over in Atlanta, North Carolina. And uh, one day I look to to be able to do uh, like Q and A's and um, sitting down, uh, possibly uh, going through teachings together. As I don't uh, yet yet think I'm at the point, uh, nor has God confirmed it necessarily uh, to do teachings. Um, but yeah, just personal building relationships, discipleship making. That's what the important part is. Perhaps uh, viewing a video and uh, just as much as I get to settle down. Uh, getting things in order as far as work, as far as schedule, um, then we'd be able to go through uh, different teachings together and things like that as I grow in the understanding of how all this technology works and uh, being able to uh, capture a live video and implement it, have like dual screens and all that type of stuff, using a microphone, investing in different pieces of equipment. Uh, it's not something I necessarily feel called to um, really get deeply involved with because that's not my gifting, um, but perhaps the Lord has someone uh, in the future that will be raised up that is gifted with that, that uh, God will be glorified through, through their gifts and talents and abilities. And I think uh, us delving into try and do all things is uh, pretty arrogant and prideful. I saw last, last week, um, right after the live stream, there was a gentleman, uh, his name was uh, Tony Button, Tony Button. And he was on a live performance for um, for TikTok Live, doing a performance in uh, I forget what the category was. I cannot remember. It's in my mind. But he was uh, using both of his feet, playing a guitar, <laughs> using a harmonica, and singing all at the same time. He was sweating and and, and just looking like he was going absolutely insane with uh, trying to keep the tempo and the rhythm with both of his feet. One hitting the stomp box as it used the, almost like the suitcase that he was sitting on as a drum, another as a, like the kick drum uh, for a regular drum set playing the guitar incredibly, using different chords, having a, a harmonica system like strap uh, that he was playing it, and then he would take a breath and sing, and then use the breath back in to like go back. It was absolutely astonishing. It was just incredible. Um, however, it reminded me of myself, how arrogant and how selfish I, I, I truly am, how, how ignorant I've become to try and do all things my own when someone may be far more of an incredible guitar player than I would be, but I try and do it myself. And, 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 and someone else is super gifted at playing the harmonica, but I gotta do it on my own. And, you know, and so we wear ourselves out trying to do everything on our own when God didn't create it to be that way. We're his body. We're the body of Christ. Someone may be an eye, an ear, a nose, a mouth, but if we're trying to play every single part, we're gonna get burned out. We're gonna be defeated by Satan and, and ministry that God has allowed us to be a part of it not last very long. So, uh, yeah, it's something that God has been convicting me of. Um, God has been convicting me of uh, just how selfish I've become. And we don't really take his word seriously. We don't rest on the Sabbath. If we're not giving our, our time to to the people that he have caused, caused us to, then uh, we're just doing what the Bible says of working for things that are stray and, and that are hay and straw and on the day that it is tested it will not be able to last it will be burned up and we will only be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven by the skin of our teeth but if we honor God and are faithful to humble ourselves slow down and realize that he doesn't need us and invest our time talent treasure in exactly what he has called us then it's going to be building up works for God's glory 
using costly stone that will stand the test when it was refined. So, uh, yeah, I pray to my brothers and sisters that we would all be, be obedient to what God has called us to do and that we would stand forward and step into the truth and reality of Christ and Mary. So, I will, uh, I'm humbled to have you guys be able to hear someone else. Another brother that is filled with the Spirit be able to share the gospel and preach. Um, and I will continue to allow you guys to, to hear that. It's just an honor to be able to be worked through by God, to be the hands and feet, to see what God is doing here in San Francisco. Again, God is moving. He is doing more. Um, and as the schedule sets in and God, God reveals himself in, in a deeper way and teaches me more, and I finally respond to what he's teaching and uh, the ministry that God is doing through this channel, I believe, will, will grow. Um, or he can shut it down tomorrow. <laughs> It's, it's not my work that started it. It's not my work that will sustain it. It's not any of our work that, that will lead it. It's God's glory, God's honor, and we just simply get to play a part. And I pray that he would continue to remind me that every single day. That I would not jump the gun, get ahead of myself, grab a hold of matters in my own hands, and realize that I am the scum of the earth and the garbage of this world without Jesus. Amen? All right, let's pray. Lord God, we pray that you would empower and embolden our brothers and sisters, Father God, as they preach the gospel, as they minister your word, Lord God, as they hand out tracts, I pray that you, God, in all of your glory, would reveal yourself, Lord God, that people would experience and encounter your kingdom. Father God, that they would go home with that track in their hand. I wouldn't just toss it aside, but even if they do, God, that you would have planted something in the heart, Lord God, would they lie awake tonight, Lord God, and think about the word that you spoke. Think about and ponder and question and consider, examine and look deeply and intently into their heart and realize that we have all fallen short. God, your word will not fall upon uh, uh, soil, Lord God, that is able to drown out or deny its power. Lord God, it is the truth, and it will set us free. Help us to not get attached, Lord God, or, or addicted to a microphone, to a sound system. But God, help us to realize that your word is enough. And that, God, you can do more in a single moment of your miracles than in hours and years and, and, and decades of ministry on our end. God, you are the one. Father, we pray that you would draw them unto your son, for no one can come to you. No one can come to your son unless you draw them. God, we pray that it would not be by eloquent speech, this vernacular, this vocabulary, Lord God, this, this, this deeply advanced intellectual and theological speech, but God, it would be through the Spirit, your Spirit, who raised our Savior from the dead, who lives in us, that people's lives be changed. God, according to your power, according to your glory, according to your might, we bring you all the honor and all the praise, for you are worthy of it all. God, we attribute and we associate no other name except the name of Jesus. God, thank you for your word, and would you do what only you can do, that people enter the kingdom of heaven by getting to know you on this earth today. In Jesus, our Lord's name, amen. Amen. And there is no other who rose from the dead except for Jesus Christ, who purchased eternal life and salvation. We want to do something to tell you that it's only in the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Jesus Christ's blood is the way to heaven. Do you want prayer, sir? Sir, brothers are here. If you want prayer, come on back. We love you. I love you. So it's wise. It's wise. It's wise. The wise person. And I'm not always wise. I haven't always been wise. I was hardened towards God. But it's wise to think about what is actually true when we step out of here, when we die. According to Jesus, there's consequences for rejecting his son, Jesus Christ. He who has the Son has life, but he who rejects the Son will not see life. For God's wrath remains on him. See, God is a God of love. But he is a God who also says, in the end, he's, he's, he's going to be a God of justice. If he doesn't judge people, God is a judge. There's two sides of God. He's a God of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one on his own. Out of love, he gave his son. But he's also just. If he didn't judge all the murders and all the sins in this world, then he's not just. And so we have to come to God because the only covering is the blood of Jesus. We have to have our sins covered with Jesus Christ. We need Jesus Christ's righteousness. God gave him who had no sin. So Jesus didn't have sin. He has 
say, Jesus Christ. And we might say, well, I'm a pretty good person. He's the way maker. And I know that. I love that that we're made in God's image. He's a curse breaker. But we have the image of God, but we have the image of the fall. We have the yes, fall of nature. Jesus. We have a sinful nature. Break those curses in your life. Excuse me, bro. Excuse me. What do you uh, What do you think about this? Why are you recording me? I'm sharing the gospel. You hear? You hear what's going on over here? Okay, that's what I asked you. That's what I asked you, dude. What do you think about this? So you don't care? You need a Bible? I asked you what you think about this. Bro, watch out, bro. Watch out. That's the first question I asked. I asked, what did you think about this? Why is it all about the Think about it. What is actually true when we step off this planet? Because something is true. Thank you. And we have to have Jesus yeah. to be resurrected to heaven. He must find God's head out and he spoke what? about hell. I asked him, what do you think about this? And he asked me what, you know, what I was recording. And I said, what's going on around the corner? And he said, I don't care. I don't care. That's okay. That's why I would separate the sheep from the goats. Sometimes people say, Jesus said that they will be thrown into the lake of fire where they'll be weeping and gnashing teeth. Jesus spoke about heaven. And he said, don't store up for yourself churches on earth. Question, will he take it and consider what's in it? Is that all who look to him and believe like in him will have everlasting it, life will and I'll raise it. him up the last day? God's will is that there's going to be a resurrection. We want to encourage you today that God has a day, the end of the age. The Bible calls it that day. And we can't hold on to anything in this world. We're not taking anything with us when we step off this planet. <laughs> what does it profit a man or woman to gain the whole world? Do you guys walk with Jesus? You know? You don't your, walk with your Jesus? Your going to be with you on the day of judgment. All the opinions of people. The Bible talks about the fear of man. The Bible says that the fear of man is a snare. It says, don't fear a mortal man who has but a breath. It says... Don't be afraid of those who can kill the body and after that can do no more. But fear God, who has the power to throw both body and soul into hell. And so, we want to encourage you today that God is real. The loving God of the Bible is real. He's a God of love and He knows all things. He made you. God made men and women. Uh, Pastor Ryan there was uh, offering up Bibles. And, and he said it was good. God had you on the drawing board. He got you Not necessarily. Uh, giving about flippantly uh, uh, offering them to those who are willing to uh, take one who had have one to go in here uh, in the great hall in the, uh, the borough of the hood there um, so he goes across the sidewalk and convicted by the spirit and turns around and taking the Bible so right now uh, Pastor Ryan in the red sweatshirt and Brother Alex 
¿Por qué? ¿Tú no quieres una relación íntima con Cristo? Do you like him, brother? How come? What do you like on man? Black and brother. And you walk with God. You walk with God. That's the beautiful thing about Christianity. Would you like one, sir? Is that you have a relationship Would you like one, ma'am? It says that Abraham walked with God. And he is a type of faith. And we, like Abraham, walk with God. And so, as I close, I just want to encourage you that today is the day of salvation. You may not have tomorrow. There is going to be a separation, and God will look at whether we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or we rejected Him. Would you like one, brother? Thanks, Jesus, sir. Would you like one? Time is coming when those who are in your graves will hear His voice. See, we're going to hear this. We're going to appear before Jesus. Every single human being is going to appear before Jesus Christ. It's not a white Western religion at all. Would you like one, brother? Would you like one? Persecution is rising throughout the world in Nigeria, China, communist countries. And Jesus Christ, it says he purchased men and women for, from every tribe and every nation by his blood. So it's Jesus Christ that saves you. God doesn't look at skin color. God looks at character. He didn't create people every color because he wanted to divide them. It's fallen man, sinful people who want to divide. It's elites and people 
people led by the devil that want to divide and cause race division. The truth is that the living God of the Bible is a God of love who had in his heart to create every race, every people, every tribe. And he loves every single person. But he wants us to be in heaven with him. He wants us to ask him to forgive us for our sins. There is no other way. Jesus said, I am the door. We have to be born again. We have to receive Christ as the way to heaven. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door shall be open for you. Read the Gospel of John and believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God bless you. Amen. 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 You guys cast lots. Oh, Cast lots. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you, brother. Telling the truth. I like this book. This is a good book. Thank you, John, for hearing me. You can read about the Proverbs uh, chapter 7. Do you know about this harmony book? I think you all. I like exercising. I'm going to get you circles. Sure. Oh, so. really good right, so keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and Would you like one, sir? my laws as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And you call, and call understanding your nearest kin that they may keep you from the immortal and women, from the seductress who flatters with her words. Oh, the women have flattered them. Okay, for, for at the window of my house, I looked through my lattice and saw among the simple, I perceived among the youths. Well, how's everything going? Huh? How's everything going? Um, you know, I can't, I, I gotta say pretty good. You know, I got good sleep last night. I struggled forever for like a long time with sleeping problems, like waking up early. So the first thing I did was look at the weather and I said, you know, it's a pump and down. I take melatonin, which is natural. And, and that does give me more dreams, you know, more, more, it's a natural, it's a very natural thing. Um, they take it for uh, when your um, sleep rhythms get out of, like, airline pilots, when your stuff gets out of rhythm. But overall, um, and you exercise during the day, right? It's kind of cloudy, though, that's the problem. And I exercise to counterbalance the, the tiredness. Yeah. So, so, you know, I'm not completely healed. Yeah, I just uh, beat so myself, you know, you, like, you know, during that workout, you know, and then, and then you, you sleep like a baby. Yeah, yeah, actually, I, I, you're right. Like, if you go running, you sleep a lot better. Yeah. And especially running outside, because then it, you know, it gets, like, good breath in your lungs. And, yeah. It's a gift, you know, ever since I've been a teenager, running has always been a, because I had a lot of angst as a teenager, um, from 14 on, and... I just found running, I mean, I think it's the endorphins, you know, and it's a way, and it keeps me balanced, you know, like, I can be depressed and not just feel like I'm in sludge, right, and I'll have four, I like writing goals down, and I'll give God the glory, because I know, I'll just say, God, this is a gift of grace, and, um, and, uh, and yeah, so I'll just, um, I'll, uh, I'll, I know the fruit of running, because I'll get back from the run, and I'll say, God, thank you, I can, uh, I can make, take care of it, Hey man, it's a mission. Where do you work at? Huh? Where do you work at? Um, I actually, well, I live in Oakland, but I work, I've worked in the Tenderloin for 20 years, a few blocks down the street, and I pick up donations for like a rescue mission. Okay. Yeah, so it's, the job works real good for me at this season of my life, driving around. Yeah, I can imagine. Is the way to hell. You're living in the house, huh? Uh, with Uriel. You I was trying to get into the SOS house, but I don't know if there's any room. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't think there is right now. She will deceive you. Yeah. She took that, it's a thousand dollars a month you know with Uriel. Oh, she's on his own right now? Kind of, you just have a few different guys or something? Uh, there's, we stay with an older Spanish pastor couple. Yeah. yeah. And they have a few different rooms in there. That's a lot. Yeah, dude, the that's a lot. Yeah. Thousand dollars. But if I, you know, if I could stores for the women, have to pay less for rent, then I could, you know, I wouldn't have to work women as much. Repent. You know, I, I, I take it for granted. Like I, I'd have to say I'm blessed because be that's the only way to make it in the Bay Like I mean, only three hundred bucks is like back in the seventies or eighties or something. You know what I mean? 
I don't hate and you. other people are struggling, you, you know, a thousand father. bucks. Because yeah. if you love my father, for a little, a little teeny tiny room. Yeah. You don't want to I would love a roommate. Get like a bunk bed. Yeah. It doesn't end well. Would you? Would they allow that? Yeah. What about um? Women are really crafty. What about, do they have other rooms also that they're trying to rent out? Liars, like say, uh, I asked Yuri if he wanted to do it, uh, but he, he said no. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, that, uh, the reason I mentioned is I thought of that first, but you're saying that you could have somebody live, live in there, yeah. As long as they're a believer, they said it's okay. Yeah, amen, amen. See, I, um, I mean, I'll, I have a bunk bed. I'll pray about it, but I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure, you know. Because there's times, you know, when, you know, you ponder, you ponder change, but uh, I don't know. You know I mean, college students do it all the time, you know. College students do it all the time. Why can't we for the kingdom of God, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yes, there's freedom. Yeah, we have all of our preferences and all of our privilege, you know, that, you know, oh, I, I don't want to live with someone. It's like, humble yourself. Believers are being, like, stripped and beaten, you know, across the world, sleeping in cells, you know, and uh, I can't share a room with someone. Like, right. No, I love, I'm glad, I love the way you said that, because I used to, like, read Voice of the Martyrs, and I was really involved in, like, writing letters, and, and, like, when they're actually in prison, and presenting it to the church, but I drifted away from it, because I think I started drifting when they, they wouldn't, you couldn't write directly to the prisoners, you know, they made some sort of electronic, uh, to I don't, less opportunity, but um, but yeah, no, I, that that's a great motivator when you start, you compare yourself to those types of situations. Yeah. 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 Jesus loves you, but he hates that sin. We'll cast you in the everlasting fire where the word does not die and the fire does not quench. You need to repent. Yeah, I'll, I'll you pray for you, man. Yourself. You know, because a thousand is too much, you know. And, um, there's got to be a better way to make it in the Bay Area. Right? I mean, that, this place is so expensive, it's hard. No one knows, but the Bible says, I will judge Anyway, I'll pray for you, brother. Thank you very much. Places and all these people that I've created, I will judge. Not only judge animals, he judges you because you have the conscience in your mind. He tells you, you know what's right and wrong, what's really wrong. God will eventually let you go and let Satan have you. How are you doing, brothers and sisters? I do not believe that we will uh, be doing the, the live stream as long today. Uh, Possibly just an hour, uh, which is only a few more minutes. Um, perhaps my tomorrow, I'm not too sure. Um, it's beginning to rain. Uh, here. What a joy it is to hear this brother speaking. This is awesome. Come down to hellfire. You want to have a good time? No, you don't. You don't want to go to hell. Trust me, you don't want to go there. I want you to do a little research. I did my own research personally. I typed on YouTube and I put in, I saw hell. And all these people testified, men and women, they testified that they died, had an outer body experience, and that their soul left their body, and they saw this hellfire that they so called a party place or something. But they saw it and they said, it doesn't look so good down there. Demons are tormenting these people. And they're not having a fun time. They're having a horrible time being burned from top to bottom eternally, forever and ever. You just get burned and then your whole soul gets reconstructed and gets burning again. Just keeps burning and burning and the worm never dies. Hell for many they decided about you to meet you at your coming. So you say this place is hell, but my friend, it's not hell. Underneath this hellfire. That's why the core of the earth has hot lava down there. Do you like one, sir? I had to assume that I could be wrong. But I think hell is hot, uh, hot lava because they call it the lake of fire. When you get cast out into the lake of fire, it's not good. You will not be happy when you enter. I, I promise you, you will not enjoy hell fire. But there is a grace that God can give you. He can give you eternal life for free. It's not a price. It's not a cost. You get into heaven for free, not a charge. There's no 
payment you need to make to Jesus and say, come on, Jesus, I'll pay you 50 bucks, get me saved. No, God doesn't work that way, my friend. God does it for free. It's a gift of eternal life. You have to work to earn it. If those people in whatever, whatever church you go to, they tell you you have to work to get saved. If you do that, no, you're not doing it. Right. It's a gift. I never did anything to deserve eternal life. God gave me that by a gift. Because he said, I am more than happy to save you. It's free. But now you have to work for me. I said, I'm more than willing. No problem. That's a deal. Because a life that God gave you, you, you should be grateful that he gave it to you. You have a life. You have, I have a claim against walking this man. feet, hands, shut work. Thank God you're not handicapped. Thank God you can have breath in your lungs. Thank God you got you got a bed to sleep in. Some people are homeless, like the man across the street. Uh, may God have mercy on you. And um, yeah, some people don't have a house to live in. So be grateful and give, give glory to God that you have what you have because everything you have is from God. Every good gift that you have. When is, is the from fast? God. Even your nice car, maybe. The fast maybe is over when? Nice kids. Thank God you have nice kids, but you need to lead them to Jesus. Follow what the Bible says and lead your kids to God. Because these kids are going to get corrupted real quick. The devil wants to catch your kids so did you already break it? before they grow up. So they teach them a lot of disobedient things in the Bible, in the, in the, in the school. And be careful because I heard on the news that a six-year-old came to a school and he shot up the school. I gotta go shopping today. Why do you think that happened? Because there's no God there, so there's no protection. You get no covering. You get no grace. So God just lets it go and says, okay, you don't want me there. I can't protect you. You don't want nothing to do with me. I can't give you any protection. So if you think about that, you want nothing to do with Jesus. Where do you expect to go? Do you expect to get to heaven without him? No, he said, I am the only way to get to heaven. So no by hearing the, um, the conversation in the back, the uh, CFM has been on a week-long uh, water fast, and um, I was just asking and inquiring about uh, the details of that. Um, and today they get to begin uh, the Daniel fast portion of it. It's 21 days, 7 weeks of water. Um, the latter 14 will be uh, vegetables, fruits, um, you know, nuts, those type of things. It's something that takes a lot of discernment. It must be something that God is calling to. We need to, pre we need to prepare ourselves greatly before we begin something like that um, because it's something that Satan uh, definitely can work through to lead us astray and to have us miss the heart of God and his true desire for what fasting really looks like. Um, yeah, continue to enjoy the brother preaching. The world will distract you as many times as it possibly can to keep you out of the out of the, the grace of God that you know, the devil won't let you go. You have to fight for your salvation. Fight for fight for Jesus to, to be saved. Jesus will save whoever wants to be saved, but you have to show that you want it that bad. It's like you have to really want it. You know how bad you want the money? It's like you're in the desert and you need that one drop of water. And you want that one drop, you gotta get it. You gotta run to Jesus and get that drop of water. But I promise you there's no water in hell. There's no water. I'm sorry. And there's no peace in hell, there's no grace, and there's no mercy in hell, my friends. It's better to go to Jesus to be saved by the only Son of God that was sent for you and me. Because it says in the Bible, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save Saved. That's why the name of Jesus means saved. Woo, that guy. Careful, sir. Very All right. Nice and easy. Okay. Yeah. God will be here soon. You never know. It says Jesus comes in as a thief of the night. He could be here any moment. Today could be your very last day in this world. There is another world waiting for you. It could be either heaven or hell. So what time do you die? Do you know? No, you have no clue what time you die. Only God knows what time you die. Because Jesus has the keys to death and Hades, not the devil. Jesus says when, you, when your time is up. So he's giving you a lot of grace. He's giving you a lot of patience to come to him. So you have to think about it. When was the last time you might have even said thank you, Jesus? When was the last time you actually even cared to say, man, Jesus really does love me. He's giving me a lot of grace. And he's being patient with me. But, you know, you've got to consider it. He had... He had to do this job of salvation to get you saved. 
would you consider what he did for you? He took a beating for you. He, he got his beard plucked. I don't know if that feels good to, to you, but it doesn't, I don't think it does. There's a man that has a beard, get your beard plucked out. It doesn't feel good. It hurts. All right, so, brothers and sisters, uh, that, I believe the live stream will be coming to a close here for, for your this time and being. Uh, and then you get a great game before that to, uh, saying, don't pick up this cross and don't get crucified. Hopefully getting connected, uh, so you're willing to pick putting up on another live stream. Cross, Praise God for the video of the testimony of uh, no, Brother really. Uriel. I'm not so sure how many of you were able to view that. Almighty Jesus um, could do this uh, for I pray that it's an encouragement to you. The Lord really moved. But thank you, Jesus, that, that you're willing to enable him to sacrifice a life That's uh, Brother Uriel. I'm sure you've seen him on a few live streams. Um, yes, I uh, look forward to hearing so from, from you guys more. Lord God, we pray that you would move to go to here in this place. Dead. When you die, we know that you are mighty. We know that you are holy. We know that you are holy. Or man wants to die, and then the judgment comes. Do what only you can. We know that it's your desire. So when it's time to die, your judgment is already made. God already made his judgment on you. He said, Lord, all these trials of sin, who paid for it? Nobody. Okay, well, you have to pay for it yourself. Thank you for giving us your sin. Thank you for filling us with your spirit. Thank you for such a deep personal connection. With us, Are you willing to take it? There is no the separation between us and you. Of Jesus, God, we or love you. you want to pay for your sins in hell, Father. We know that we can speak for God. We can claim for all eternity. Your word is no our voice, Lord God. We can only there's no your spirit will no it no truly be able to work with the power in your soul. There's a man who is there. It is. He begged for one drop of water. We thank you for our brothers and sisters. I lift up all of their prayer requests. All of their needs, God, would you, you bless my brothers and my sisters and their right family, their finances. Lord God, would you take them and use no them, Father God. You can't you empower them, Lord God, to be bold for your kingdom, filled with your spirit, to go into their workplaces, to go into their schools, to be the light in their neighborhood, Lord God. And among their family, Lord God, that their families would be saved. God, that your name would be glorified, that your name would be lifted up, God, in and through every word that they speak, every thought that they think. God, I pray that... You will be encouraged, Lord God, knowing that our prayers are heard before you. And that in your perfect time, according to your perfect will, everything that they lift up to you because of the the sacrifice that your son Jesus made, your will shall be done. And we know that you love us, you care for us, you have what is best for us in this story. God, thank you for your spirit. God, to give them a fire burning within their soul. Lord God, for more of you, I pray that you would give them a passion, a zeal, a fervor, a love, Father God, for your word. As I need more and more every day. God, I pray that we would humble ourselves and be reminded. God, that we would arise and awake, Lord God, from our slumber darkness. You God, believe would you just pluck us out. You would work. Lord God, the lives of our brothers and sisters that are being persecuted all across the world, Lord God, those in other nations that are hostile towards your son Jesus, and those that are choosing to take a stand for you, even if it costs them their lives, God. I pray that you give them diligence, perseverance, and endurance, Father God, to remain faithful, strong, and steadfast, bring glory to the end. God, you know their name, you know their struggle, you know their hardship, but God, give them a joy to be able to rejoice and dance in the suffering, the, 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 the torture, Lord God, to, to count it worthwhile, Lord God, to joy to be able to suffer for your name. God, how amazing you are. We love you. We thank you. Better is one day in your presence than a thousand elsewhere. In Jesus' name, your son, our Lord. He's looking like, well, I believe in God, and look what happened. I got, I got taken care of before it was game over for the whole world. The whole world was condemned, and only Noah and his family, his little family, got saved. Only that. God bless you guys. Got saved all glory to God. All from, praise and all worship. From the judgment, from the wrath of God, because the whole earth was covered by water.